Good afternoon to you viewers, this is the Colonel speaking to you live from the Grange for British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting. And today we've got a most unusual record. Um, let's grab it. Uh, yes, Vivian Foster, the Vicar of Mirth, the Parson and the Charleston, parts one and two. I shall switch over halfway through. Here we go. My dear parishioners, I have assembled you tonight to talk to you about dancing. I want this to be a real parish of mirth. Yes, I think so. I received an invitation last Wednesday to Carnival Night at the Ballet de Dance. I accepted gladly. I sent a note to my curate, please take my place at the Lad Soda Water Guild tonight. I am not feeling very well. And he replied, Neither am I. I have been invited to. <laughs> so I think so. I shall never forget that night. My dear friends, the real cut from the joint is the dance called the New Charleston. You practice for this at home by rubbing your feet on the doormat until you wear out your welcome. For the old Charleston, you learned by throwing your legs over telegraph poles. <laughs> If you try to spell the word OXO with your legs, there is the Charleston step. Now, place both knees together, turn your toes in, and kick off your right ear with your right toe. If your right ear refuses to come off and wishes to remain in your family, then try the trick on the left side. All this time, do as many steps as possible with your free foot, the one that is not cutting off your ear to spite your toes. It is more by good luck than judgment that you do the same steps as your partner. Then, the movements of the body are very important. You can learn these by smacking a blamange and watching its convalescence. Don't show any signs of enjoyment. Look bored to tears. This dance was invented for overcrowded ballrooms. Dancers are not responsible for what part of the room their legs will reach. So sweet you lambs run for shelter, and the best dancers take the middle of the floor in order to be least inconspicuous. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> My partner had disappeared a long way down the room, having no further use for me, leaving me with my feet interlocked, and nobody had a Yale key. As I had killed most of the people, there was I all alone in the middle of the room. Suddenly the band stopped and the survivors expected an exhibition dance from me. Beautiful colored lights went spinning round the room. Streamers, like stock exchange tapes, came from all quarters, and your poor old parson was bound from head to foot. They carried me to a corner where my church warden's wife, Mrs. Offertory Bag, was practicing more steps. She looked like an old hen, scratching for food for her offspring. She said, I feel so giddy. Shall we sit it out? I said, I am not so giddy as that. No, I don't think so. <laughs> right, viewers, on to side two. Then the jazz band restarted. The conductor stood on a diving board and waved his arms for help. Some bands play out of tune, these played out of spite, as <laughs> I think so. There was a saxophone with knobs on, sending out spasms like children in pain calling for their dill water. The trap drummer kept hitting a cowbell so that we should have plenty of milk for our coffee. Then he tickled the drum with a saucepan cleaner. The trombone player opened out and made big dents in the back of the man with a the banjo. They called this syncopation, which is what is known as an indefinite beat, and then a hiccup. You beat on the first and third of a bar, and then name your drink. The cornet blower pushed a plug of lead into the bargain placement of the instrument to deaden the sound, and when he removed it, the rush of air from its underground railway sent the conductor flying. The soprano saxophone had a mouthpiece like the long cigarette holder ladies love so well. All the brass instruments had bowler hats put on their speaking parts. 
and then I knew what is meant by the phrase of talking through your hat. My dear friends, the Charleston is run by the Society of Shoemakers and the Society of Builders. You wear out your shoes and you wear out the floor. But never mind, next week in this very room we will dance the Charleston. You will not need any lessons. I have described it so well. Yes, I think so. I myself will be the master of the ceremonies, or as they call it, MC, master of the Charleston. One of my duties would be to introduce people to their partners. This will not be necessary. You all know each other, and I sympathize with you. I trust that you will all bring plenty of valuables with you, as the clearing of the floor after the slaughter will naturally belong to me. Yes, I think so. Those of you who have been born with Kanak Kandis and India rubber ankles will have the time of your lives. Let us all shake and scratch and kick in the parish of Mark. And if our parish band gets a bit mixed, and instead of giving us the foxtrot, show me the way to get coal. One gives the blue Danube two-step, another the wedding march waltz, and yet a third, I've never seen a straight banana tango. You can waltz, two-step, and steeplechase, according to how you pick out the tune. My beloved, the result of this great scrimmage will show the origin of the wonderful Charleston. Yes, I think so. <laughs> Well, there we go, viewers, and, uh, do you know, some of those jokes were actually quite funny. Amazing, really, isn't it? Thank you, viewers, and goodbye.